In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use standard deviations to anticipate where price should be going. The first example, I'm going to show you how you can use standard deviations on manipulation moves. So let's say we just have made a shift in market structure right here. And in this range, we want to see any form of PDR array forming. So right here, I'm just going to use a Favelli gap. So now that we know we have a PDR array, we want to see price going up to this Favelli gap. And that movement up to the Favelli gap is the manipulation move. The manipulation move, we want to use standard deviations. So in this case, we have a bearish example. So we want to go from a high to a low. Right before we get into the next example, I'm just going to show you the standard deviation settings. So now that we know where to use our standard deviations, we want to look at the minus 1 to minus 1.5 range. The minus 1 to minus 1.5 range is where we want to see any form of second manipulation move. So in this move, we want to see a short term high created up to a form of PDRA. When we have this short term high or manipulation move right here, you can also use standard deviations on it. And as you see, those standard deviations are aligning almost with the first manipulation move. The next target is the minus 2 to minus 2.5 range. <clears throat> the minus 2 to minus 2.5 range, we want to see any form of PDRA or social liquidity that could support, support price going higher. This range right here could also be used as the social liquidity or a reversal. So there doesn't need to be any social liquidity, just the minus 2 to minus 2.5 range. For this first chart example, we have just revisited this bearish Favelli gap consequent encouragement. So now we could anticipate price going lower. And if you also notice something, you can see right here we have accumulation. Manipulation up to the consequent encouragement. So now we could anticipate distribution. And the distribution would most likely be down to the minus 2 to minus 2.5 range of this manipulation standard deviations. So let's see what happens. So right here, we visit the Favelli gap again. So now we want to see a distribution. So right here we get distribution and we don't make another move to the upside at the minus 1 to minus 1.5 range. That's fine. Just as long as we touch the minus 2 to minus 2.5 range. Just to make, to make it a bit more clear, <coughs> you can see we have the consolidation, manipulation, then we use the standard deviations of the manipulation, then we look for distribution, we consolidate again, get a manipulation up to the Favelli gap, and then get a distribution down to the minus 2 to minus 2.5 range, and we also touch the minus 3 range. You could also use standard deviations on the second manipulation move we had, and those standard devi deviations was also aligning with the first manipulation move we had, as you see, and we also came down and touched the minus 2 to minus 2.5 range. For this next example, we have a consolidation, as you see right here. And then we have just made a manipulation move, taking out this cell side liquidity. So now we could expect distribution to the upside. And now that we also have our manipulation, we could use standard deviations on it to anticipate where the distribution should be. So right here at the minus 2 to minus 2.5 range, we expect price to go.
At the minus 1 to minus 1.5 range, we don't get a reaccumulation, so we just go straight for the minus 2 range. Just to make it a bit more clear, you can see we have our accumulation or consolidation, then we have our manipulation, and at last we have the distribution. For the next example, we have just taken out buy side liquidity. So now that we have taken out this buy side liquidity, we could anticipate a reversal. So we could use standard deviations from this high down to this low. So let's see what happens. So right here we touched the minus 1 to minus 1.5 range. So now we could anticipate price going up to this for value gap. So right here we touched the for value gap. And if you were to take a trade entry, you could put your stops above these highs and target the minus 2 to minus 2.5 range. And the minus 2 to minus 2.5 range lines with this sell side liquidity. Let's see what happens. And right here we end up taking out the sell side liquidity with the minus 2 to minus 2.5 range. Just to make it a bit more clear, you can see we have our manipulation move up to this buy side liquidity. And then we go lower, forming a farewell gap. Then we touch the minus 1 to minus 1.5 range and tap up into this farewell gap. And after that, we make another manipulation move, as you see right here, from this high to this low. Then we go all the way down into the first manipulation move, minus 2 range, taking out the sell side liquidity. And also with the second manipulation move, we take out the minus 2 to minus 2.5 range. You can also use the minus 4 range to your final drawn liquidity. As you see right here, we touch the minus 4 range. But I personally mostly use the minus 2 to minus 2.5 range, but the minus 4 range is also a good drawn liquidity. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if there is anything you didn't understand, just comment down below.